Number 19, a former higher question. A scaling triangle and that configuration makes it look like you're using the sine rule. Simply says, prove this for that triangle. Now it's mentioning A and it's mentioning B, so what the angle opposite A got, what the angle opposite B, I don't have it, so I'm going to write that down. What's the size of angle at B? Well, it's all mentioned in radians. It'll be 180 minus the sum of those two, so it'll be pi minus the sum of those two. That's pi upon 2 minus theta plus lambda. So you've got pi minus pi upon 2, but plus theta, but minus lambda. So pi minus pi upon 2 is just pi upon 2 plus theta minus lambda. Now I can write out the expression. What have I got here then? So it would be A over the sine of its angle, which is lambda, would be B over the sine of its angle, which is pi upon 2 plus theta minus lambda. See, it's almost there. Now what I'll have to do is expand this then. Now there are three parts. You just put them together in a convenient manner. So if I left myself enough room for this, I'll just put it down here. So if I've got the sine of pi upon 2 plus theta minus lambda, I'll simply group those two together so I can use the addition formulae. So that's the sine of the sum of two angles. So I've got the sine of pi upon 2 times the cos of theta minus lambda plus, reverse it, the cos of pi upon 2 times the sine of theta minus lambda. Now the sine of pi upon 2, that's 90, that goes up to 1. Cos of pi upon 2, that's 90, it drops down to 0, that disappears. So that's just equal to the cos of theta minus lambda, I'll put plus 0. Now that does for part of the working, even though it's displaced apart from here. So I can go back up to here now. So I've got the sine of lambda is equal to b over, and that changed into the cos of theta minus lambda. And then finally, take the sine lambda across and multiply b sine lambda over cos theta minus lambda. And there it is. Those were the required parts.